so good to be here with my <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah! I don't think the legislature is going to feel like this. <laughs> in there. Yeah. You know, it already feels a little bit better this year. It feels a little bit better because the work you all did last year, culminating in November's elections. Remember last time we were up here, we were talking about a 21 to 9 Senate? 21 Republicans, 9 Democrats. The disasters coming out of there. But well, we're 17 to 13 now. Yeah. The work you did. And it has already made a difference. Elections matter. When we sat down, I sat down at Victoria at the State of the State speech in the House, and Governor Brewer came up and talked. There was a part of her speech that wasn't in the prepared script that was handed out to the media. But when she got to it and announced that she was going to expand Medicaid to 133% of poverty, we could not believe it. We stood up and screamed and clutched each other. This is Jan Brewer. <laughs> uh, we should have been tipped off, but look before she said that. She said, uh, uh, she actually made a joke at her own expense, which is not typical. <laughs> said, uh, you know, none of us like the federal government and what they do in Arizona, but sometimes you just can't wag a finger at them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jen, you can be funny at early expense. That's what happened. Yeah. Well, how it happened is all of a sudden she became pragmatic, too, and realized that it's insane to turn down $8 billion in the next four years to cover 130% of poverty and below. All those people, 250,000 more people. In, in our hospitals are struggling. We see hospitals going down, going to bankruptcy in Mesa and Douglas because the cost of all those people coming in for care who were cut off by this legislature in the last few years. We've got to get them back on to get our health care system in shape. We've got to get that $8 billion injected into our economy to pay for doctors and nurses and lab workers and people who will then spend it in our restaurants and our stores and really get the economy going. Right. And those people who say that that's not fiscally conservative, I talk to them and say, look, it actually will cost us $300 million a year more not to cover these people. What part of that is fiscally conservative? <laughs> yeah, right. right. If they do that, if they decide to turn down this deal and reject that money and reject covering all these people here in Arizona, they are simply paying a bribe to their ideological right. And it's our money they're paying the bribe with. Right. We cannot allow that to happen. I do not believe that will happen. But the reason that Jan Brewer decided to take this step was, yeah, there's a lot of money there. But she knew it was a different legislature, and it's a different legislature because of what you did. We saw the fruits of that as well when it came to the anti-union bills that we've seen year after year. A few weeks after we started, one of those bills came to the floors at Senate Bill 1182 which would have forbidden the unions from deducting, allowing people who are union workers to have their pay deducted to pay union dues for their payroll. Would have devastated unions all over Arizona. It went down 17 to 12 on the floor. Wow. Four others voted with us on the floor, and two of those were the majority leader and the majority whip. Oh, wow. Who would have known that the war on unions would end on the Senate floor in Arizona? Ah, wow. That's what you did. I would say that. Yeah. 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 So there's still a lot more work to do, though. You know, there's, there, we got to make sure, push through, and make sure that this Medicaid restoration gets through. Yeah. Amen. And there's still some crazies there, let me tell you. Having been on the Government Environment Committee with Gail Griffin as the chair, with people like Judy Burgess there, uh, telling us all that Biden has to the shock troops of the UN communist conspiracy to undermine the American way of life. <laughs> with Chester Crandall there, who's trying to make all forms of gold and silver legal tender throughout Arizona so your neighborhood shops can have a sayers and scales there. Imagine how big the lines of the grocery store will get. Yeah. <laughs> 
All that stuff is still pushing through. And just this last week, there was a hearing about this Agenda 21 so-called communist conspiracy in the Senate, which Judy Burgess held. And she didn't want any TV cameras in there. But I have a video that I'm going to be posting to Facebook and YouTube soon. <laughs> I was the only Democrat on the dais, and I was you know, asking questions of former Senator Sylvia Allen, who's now a supervisor. Oh, I was man. asking questions of the Tea Party leader from California who was trying to tell us everything was going on. And I guess they got a little tired of me because Representative Bob Thorpe from, anybody here from District, you know, Legislative District 6? No. Okay, you know Bob Thorpe. Yeah, Bob Thorpe was the guy who last week decided that he was going to sell bulletproof vests for all of us legislators That's in the right. legislative room. That's right. He got a discount for us. <laughs> well, Bob Thorpe, after I'd asked too many questions in this thing, decided to make a little funny joke where he asked the hundred angry Tea Party supporters in the audience to get out their cold 45s and shoot them. <laughs> in the Senate hearing room. Well, that's on the video, so we'll see. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and later, it got even darker when he pointed out Sandy Barr, who was one of the heroes up there. It's the Sierra Club. She's from the Sierra Club, go get her! After his gun comment. These are the people that are still up there. And next time, we're going to get Bob Thorpe out of there. We still got some bad news, but we're going to work on that bad news, and it's going to be all good news next time we come back here. So